So it's a constantly like a musical, little musical voyage, doing a, a piece of intonation in Melodyne. Well, uh, how long have we got? <laughs> yeah, brief. No, you said brief. Um, I started, uh, uh, got some basic training at the BBC in the late 70s and then moved into a very small recording studio and uh, kind of I'm self-taught uh, actually for my sins. Uh, had the pleasure of uh, uh, working with John Fox early in my career, moved into the 80s, did a lot of work with Depeche Mode and Erasure, uh, lived in Berlin for many years, moved back to London, had a fantastic uh, production room at Strong Room where I uh, met a lot of people and worked with a, a whole bunch of different uh, artists. Um, my website, GarethJones.com, has got it all listed in uh, un unremitting detail. Uh, most recently, I've just mixed a great record for um, uh, for AD, uh, Efterklang record, um, uh, the last Grizzly Bear record. I had the pleasure of mixing. Uh, sounding like mixing, I'm doing quite a lot of mixing now, obviously, um, and I uh, also mixed the first Interpol record, so, uh, or, or played a, a big part in mixing the first Interpol record. Because I've been in the business a long time, I've been uh, uh, lucky enough to have worked with some uh, really great artists and been a part of, a small part of, some uh, fantastically uh, iconic uh, albums. And obviously that new uh, artists and, uh, and uh, clients pick up on that because they look at um, uh, my CV, which is, as I said, you know, 30 years long, and, and they, th uh, they think, oh, maybe he knows a little bit about what he's doing because uh, they, re they connect to some of the records. For me, that's what it's about, I think. That's why people come to me because they connect with some of the records that I've been a part of. I suppose one of the uh, great classics uh, was uh, Depeche Mode's Black Celebration um, and uh, that was a very intensive experience uh, because we decided to uh, do it uh, Werner Her Herzog style and uh, live the album and, and we didn't have a day off from starting the beginning of recording to finishing the mixing. So uh, we all went a bit crazy but perhaps that claustrophobic atmosphere is reflected in the uh, music itself, you know. As my uh, uh, musical ears have developed, I've become more fussy, I suppose, like the whole rest of the industry, about intonation of, of vocals. So when Melodyne appeared, because it has a, a different model uh, in the sense that it's not real-time tracking the audio and constantly trying to adjust to bring it into tune. It's looking at the overall packets of audio and then moving them as you command it to. I, I, it was just a, a, an interface that I could relate to much better. And uh, in my early days with Melodyne, I turned on one of my engineers, uh, Jeff Nola is his name, a very musical guy with a very good ear for pitch. I turned him on to it and he used my copy and then sub subsequently bought his own copy uh, to do a lot of tuning of vocals um, in, a, in a really musical way, in, in, in a way that just kind of seemed to make everyone happier without mashing it all up in some horrible unmusical way. And, uh, and actually I learned quite a bit from uh, watching him use it. Obviously work with the artist to get the uh, uh, best um, uh, t uh, performances and takes that we, we think we, uh, we can do. Then I might do some editing of the takes, you know, it, it really genuinely goes from taking like a whole take that someone's done to perhaps doing some detailed editing depending uh, between the takes to, to make a, a composite vocal. Uh, and, but I do, I do that with when the artist isn't there because I find it much easier actually and, and more satisfying for everyone to so work with the artist to get a performance and then in the background uh, load my edit into Melodyne and tweak it as I feel is appropriate and that is uh, one of the great things about it for me is that it's very the amount of adjustment you can do of 
of uh, intonation and moving the slides and working on the vibrato it goes from like one zero percent to a hundred percent so it's a constantly like a musical little musical voyage doing a, a piece of intonation in Melodyne we can do the editing in, in a lot of detail and indeed uh, I do you do do it in a lot of detail and it's kind of fun to do it's a bit nerdy maybe but I've, I kind of I've, I find it quite fun to do there's a big demand for in tune vocals it seems because everyone's so used to hearing them now like really tuned vocals so I've been in and out of this in different amounts so that so what I'm trying to say now is the way what the way that I try and work with Melodyne and tuning is sensitively I try and tune it an, enough so that I feel okay about it and therefore it stands and falls I mean maybe I make the wrong decisions but I try and I definitely I try not to over try not to over tune I try to listen through and tune the things that I feel need tuning Just putting together doing a record with a, a, a young uh, woman called Emmy the Great uh, and uh, it's her second uh, album and she is, uh, in my opinion, a talented uh, songwriter and singer and she has some great lyrics and she has a nice band and I'm very much looking forward, I hope, to working on the new Sons and Daughters album for Domino Records, um, which they're currently uh, recording in Glasgow.